And we want to bring to you the clear message that we all need saving. Because when the world says, when we tell the world you need to be saved, they will say, from what? And I was like that before my life in the Spirit Center. I thought that all I needed was me, my abilities. If I fail, I'll pull myself by my bootstrap, stand up, and continue doing what I need to do. But God has a different plan. Perhaps it falls because of the fact I wasn't so sure there was a God. Maybe some of you have that question. And then in the course of my, the course of my journey, I came across some things about our faith that enlightened me. For example, if you arrive at a deserted island, and you come across in that deserted island someone, a thing that was put together by pieces of wood that floated into that deserted island, formed it into something, maybe a piece of chair or a shelter, like a hut, right? If you arrive at that island, what would you think? You would think that someone of intelligence was there before you, amen? That designing that chair or that hut for him to use in that deserted island. And if by virtue of that simple logic, that if you went to the deserted island and you come across something like that, and you know that there, there was someone before you who had intelligence, it's definitely impossible for us to think that there was no God that designed or intelligent being or extremely super intelligent being that designed the human body. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because millions of dollars nowadays spent by Google and all these other technology companies, for example, are trying to even just design the eyeball. Millions of dollars plus thousands of hours of intelligent super scientists trying to design an eyeball, they could not even come close to what we have. And it only should be a clear conclusion person, the being who designed us, is extremely intelligent. And not only that, millions of dollars are spent to even just design, you know, these uh, things that lubricate our joints, and they could not even come close to what God placed in our lives. So that's one thing that came to me that made me realize there's got to be something more to this religion of mine. And this hunger started to grow in me. And I started searching. And then I came across another thing that says, if you want to study a rock, it is so easy for you to put the rock under a microscope and observe it. And you would know what its composition is and so forth and so on. If you were to study an animal, you would try to observe it without disturbing its piece so that you know how it functions in its habitat or among its peers. But if you want to know about a human being, like Fatima, there is no way I could know anything about her 
unless she cooperates and reveals something to me that would allow me to know more about her. And then, when it comes to knowing our God, it is absolutely impossible for us to know our God unless He reveals Himself to us. Do you all agree? Amen? Amen. And unfortunately, He only seems to reveal Himself to certain people over the course of history. And in that, I understood that because most people are who have characters or personalities or conditions of their soul are such that there is no way God can reveal Himself to the human being. You have to have a certain condition, character in your soul for you to see why. If you look through a dirty telescope, you cannot see much, right? But if you if you clean that lens on your telescope, then you can see much more. Our problem is we see through our souls, and our souls are dirty telescopes. God, who made us, made us in such a way that he planted something in us that tells us to behave in a certain way. No, there's something that tells us, don't do this. Don't do that. Just like anything else, if you make something, or like a car, there are instructions on how to use that car, otherwise you'll break the car. God did something to us too. If we have that rationale in us, we have some sort of intelligence, such that when we make things, we have to have instructions in order for us to use things properly. How much more are God, who is much more intelligent than us, and designed us a very complicated machine? So therefore, he planted in us to this, to that. Don't do this. Don't do that. Right? But because of the fact that we are so separated from God, which is one of uh, the basic truths. Why? Because of our condition of our character. We can't hear those words properly as to how to behave. And so we end up doing what we want to do and not what God instructed us originally how to do it. Let me share you an example. When you hear someone cry for help, there are two things that would cross your mind. One, I think I should help, right? And then there's another thing that would cross your mind and you would say, oh, I don't want to be involved. I don't want to, I don't want to sacrifice. I'm like, I need to preserve myself. I don't want to go into that picture. Right? You agree with me? Right? Those are two things that cross your mind. But then above that, there's another voice that will tell you, you ought to help. That's how God designed us. Telling us to behave in a certain way. Now, Here's another truth that we discover. None of us can obey that voice perfectly. Anybody here who thinks he can obey that perfectly, then this seminar is not for you to believe. But I'm just saying, if you do agree with me, please continue to listen. Because we are not in a position to obey this thing perfectly. And if we all come to that understanding, then that means we are disappointing the very person who made us. Because he made us to behave in 
a certain way, and yet we don't. And in the course of time, what God did is He revealed Himself first to Abraham and then to the Israelites. And He told them, you got to do this, you got to do that. First to the Ten Commandments. And yet, after just being miraculously saved from the Egyptians, 40 days later, they still disobeyed those Ten Commandments. The first commandment was to be, to believe in that one true God. Amen? Amen. Amen. You all agree. So he revealed himself to us as you ought to obey through the Israelites. This is what you ought to do. And yet they keep on disobeying. And then he gave them another break. And then they keep on disobeying. Then comes next. He also now brings them into the promised land. But in bringing them to the promised land, the one thing he did, he also had instructions. Do not take anything that is of the kingdom. Right? And for you who read the Bible, let me bring to your attention the battle of Ai. Prior to the battle of Ai, Joshua was constantly winning every battle because they were extremely confident that they have that God of Israel behind them. And they could not fail. As long as they obeyed their God, they will not fail. They would win every battle. And suddenly, they failed. They lost the battle of Ai. And what was their conclusion? Joshua's conclusion, right away? Something must have done something wrong. Someone must have done something wrong. And in the process, in the Bible, it explains that they started to investigate and investigate, and they finally came across one person who took something that he was attracted to and kept it hidden under his tent. And sure enough, they understood why they lost the battle. And Joshua and the elders were very upset. What is the message? The message is one sin affects the entire tribe of Israel. The same message is carried down to us. The one sin that we do affects the entire human race. And we do not see it that way. Because we see ourselves only me, my children, my mother, my father, my, bro my brothers and sisters, that's it. We do not see ourselves as one big family of God connected to each other down through the ages, starting with Adam and Eve down to today. One very complicated tree of many thousands of generations. We do not see that. Nowadays, we were taught simply, as long as I go to church, I will avoid hell. Amen? That's all we do. That's all we think. That's all we were taught by my parents. Go to church or else you will not go to hell. You will go to hell. Right? So there's one other thing that you have to realize what God revealed to us then. Now through the Israelites, he had one man reveal himself as God. And that's Jesus Christ. And what did he say? Be perfect. For my father is perfect. He also revealed to us 
that there is a father loving the son and the son loving the father and because that love is so perfect it generates a third person in the Holy Spirit. And then we come to understand why he made us man and woman. Because each man and woman who get married are called to be an image of God. So therefore, when the husband, I'm a husband, I'm a father, but I love my wife perfectly, and then my wife loves me back perfectly, we generate a third person nine months later, and we will be given a name. That's the image of God. He wanted to show us that is the kind of life that the father and the son, the son has. Although we don't do it perfectly, but he reveals to us what kind of God he is. And he reveals to us that his ultimate goal for us is for us to be drawn into that life of theirs of perfect love. See, we don't seem to see, appreciate how serious that objective is. Because why? We think, oh, if I do this good thing today, this good thing tomorrow, and this good thing, as long as they don't, I don't rob people, I don't do this, I should be okay. But let me share with you this a revelation to me. If I had the slightest bit of selfishness in me, do you think I can enter into the perfect ocean of love? of God in the Father and in the Son. When he said be perfect, imagine how daunting it is that it is not easy to become a Christ, to be a common Christian. He exactly said, whoever believes in me will receive power to become a child of God. My brothers and sisters, God loves us not because we are good. It is because God loves us, he will make us good and perfect. So that we can enter into that love, that ocean of love, of perfect love that is between the Father and Son. Let me repeat what I just said. God loves us. And because He loves us, He will make us good and perfect. But the unfortunate thing about that command, or that project, is the fact that God gave us free will. And for those of you who know what free will is, it means we are absolutely free to be bad or to be good. Amen? And he is such a gentleman that he will not force himself on us. That we, because what God did when he designed us was what? He wanted us to freely choose him so that we can have that life of perfect happiness and joy. And we try to find that perfect happiness and joy of something in this world instead of finding it in Him. When we design cars, we design cars so that we would run on gasoline. But when God designed us, we were designed to run on His Spirit. And many times, we take Him for granted. We push Him away. Because we would rather do what we want to do. And find our own happiness our way. This is 
why we need God ordained this life and spirit center. And we were ordained to do this so that we can be clear in the understanding that we, listen, it is not easy to be a Catholic, to be a Christian. That he wants us to be a perfect child. We need power to become a child of God. So this is what he did. Jesus said it to himself, to us. When the rich man went to him, asking him, what can I do to enter eternal life? He said, okay. Follow the commandments. Oh, I did that, Lord. Okay. Then sell your wealth. Give it to the poor. And follow me. And what did he do? He walked away sad. And then his disciples were stunned. Then he, the disciples said, I hope you know this scripture. Then who can enter the kingdom of heaven? And what was his response? His response was, for man, it is impossible. But for God, it is Why did Jesus say that? Because he knew that he was ultimately going to give us his Holy Spirit to empower us to become children of God. So what was this whole business of his becoming a man and dying? Why? If he could just easily give us his Holy Spirit. And this is one thing that I came to know. As God, he does not know the meaning of submission, surrendering your will to the Father. And he does not know the meaning of saying, not, of giving up his life, suffering for others. Why? Because he does not have a body. And we all know that because we lost our inheritance through Adam and Eve, through this one couple, one word, one being, Adam, we lost the opportunity of automatically going into heaven. And therefore, there was one person that needed to do that for the human race. The same way Adam lost it, one person needed to do it. But it needed to be another human being. And so therefore what Jesus did, what God the Father did, is send Jesus to assume a body. And then he himself would surrender his will. And love perfectly. And do exactly what his Father instructed him to do. Because what Adam failed to do was, first of all, fail to obedience. Not only that, he failed to trust in the Father completely. He was confronted by the serpent who was known, that we now know, as a murderer who brings death into the human race. And he also failed die for his bride because the serpent was about to murder them and he was silent and he allowed Eve to confront the serpent he had no backbone he failed to die for his bride so one new man needed to do that to restore the human race and none of our elders or our fathers could ever do that perfectly. Look at history. Abraham was not exactly perfect. Right? Think about it. First of all, he was afraid. He lied that Sarah was his wife. 
Noah was a drunk. Forget David. David did the worst of all. Committed adultery. So that's why we needed one human being, and therefore we needed someone who also repent perfectly. By repent perfectly, I mean to start all over again. Why? Each one of us needed to start all over again. Because through the years of our growing up, all we learned was self-conceit, selfishness, and that's it. Me, 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 me. The problem of this age is when we received ourselves, we made ourselves the center of the universe. And that is what the serpent taught our fathers and taught us that we were. And we needed someone to repent perfectly first. And that is why the father sent his son to do that, to repent perfectly and then to say, surrender his will by saying in the end, even when he was faced with death, not my will, but thy will be done. And then he was able to show that he was able to love perfectly because he was willing to die for his bride. And his bride is the church, us. So now, this is a man who revealed God's plan perfectly, down to history. And then, now here's the first human being able to do all those things perfectly. And when he died, he was given resurrection. And then through the resurrection, he gave us his Holy Spirit. And through the Holy Spirit, it's granted in each and every one of us through our baptism so that now we all can say like what St. Paul said it is no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me. Because now what happens in our case with Brother Conrad's ex uh, example if someone slaps you now you are empowered to turn your other cheek because Christ now lives in you. The battle is whether it's going to be your will or his will. And he's not going to force himself on us. He is not a tyrant. He is a gentleman. He gave us free will. And bear in mind this. This is one truth. That I so clearly saw that was so wonderful. We think God is perfect and He's all powerful and all good, then therefore there should be no evil in this world. Let me share this with you. The one thing that I came across God is indeed all powerful, but He cannot do. The intrinsically impossible. What I mean by that is, if he gives us free will, he cannot withhold free will at the same time. You agree? Amen? Amen. So therefore, if he gives us free will, that's it. He gives us free will. So we are free to choose bad or good. So he cannot withhold that because why? He wants us to choose him freely because he's a perfect creator. In his mind, it is not worth creating a robot that is saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you. <laughs> no, that is not worth creation. That's why he gave us free will so that we can freely choose him. And over the years, that is not what we did. So now, he empowers.
empowers us through his baptism, through our baptism. I want to share this with you. Sacraments is what God does in us. It's not what we do for God. It is what God does in us. When we go to Mass, it is not because of our doing something for God. It's because God wants to do something for us because He wants us to be good and perfect. That's the whole point of sacraments. And we do not seem to know or appreciate what that is. We think it is an obligation for us to comply with so that God can see, I did it. Okay, one check mark. One check mark, one check mark, one Sunday, one check mark. Okay, you can pass go, you can go enter heaven. No. His whole, whole objective is to make us saints. Because he wants us to freely choose him and enjoy the life of eternal life with him and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The sacrament of matrimony is meant to give us Christ's love and fidelity so that the man can be faithful and the woman can be obedient and be one and be united. But the sacrament is another word for sacrament is an oath. Sacrament is a Latin word for oath. That means we swear that he is our God, but he also swears to himself that he will make us what he wants to make us. But he's always faithful, we're the ones who are not. So that's why when we swear an oath, what do we do? We all know the meaning of swearing an oath. At the end of the oath, what do we say? So help me God. Therefore, when you're married, you swore before God that you're going to be faithful and you swore before God that you're going to love your husband till death do you part. So help me, God. Amen. Therefore, when it comes to a point that you cannot do it, you come to Christ and say, Lord, help me to forgive my husband. Help me to forgive my wife. Help me to love. Because you are the source of love. Help me, Jesus Christ. Because he is a perfect father. He does not raise spoiled brats. He wants us to be perfect. And you wonder why? Sister Marlene is so good. How come she still had cancer? How come she still fell? My brothers and sisters, our intelligence is so limited. We cannot see. God's will, God's plan entirely. But one thing for sure we know that his objective is to draw us closer to him and make him love, make, a, make us love him perfect and love others perfect. Because he wants to raise perfect children. That is why we need salvation. That is why Jesus died on the cross. First, he wanted to show us how much the Father hates sin. That it requires so much pain and suffering for someone in order that we can be reconciled to the Father. And at the same time, by the same act, he shows us how much he loves us. Because he's willing to go through what he did. 
And then He gives us the Spirit. So that in our daily lives, when we are struggling with our faith, we say, please help me believe in Lord Jesus. When we go through crosses, through trials, my brothers and sisters, look at history, look at the Bible. The Israelites were tested in their faith. We all will be tested in our faith. Because he wants to know that you really believe in the Father and trust him perfectly. My brothers and sisters, I promise you, we will all be tested in our faith. Because he did it from the very beginning of the human race. If he did not want to test our faith, he should not have put the tree in the middle of the garden. He should also put snake fences to prevent the serpent from coming in. But he did not. Because he wanted to know that Adam and Eve would freely choose him and trust in him and believe in him and then love each other, be willing to give their lives for each other. Perfect love. So that they and their and children can enter into the true heaven. Eden was not our destination. Because in the Bible it says, No man has seen or heard what God has been prepared for us. So therefore, Eden was not our ultimate destination. Heaven is. Amen. 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 So our goal here today is to make you appreciate that we need salvation. We need a Savior. The whole point of our needing a Savior is because we need to be perfect. We need to love perfectly. And we need to be able to say, not my will, but I will do that. Amen. Let us all close our eyes. It's straight. Lord Jesus, I thank you for, for the words that you share today through my mouth. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the Holy Spirit.
Thank you.